Hi children, how are you all? Today we are going to study about the living world. Children, I will ask you a question. What are the things you observe in your surrounding? Yeah, you may observe animals, birds, mountain, forest, river, soil, insects, etc. Right in your room, chair, table, window, door. Yes or no? We see many things around us. So, the things around us is a environment. Whatever the things we see in our surrounding is called a environment. Understood? So, as I told you, we see variety of things around us. In that, some are living and some are non-living. So, here I am having a list of some things. Now, we have to classify them into a living beings and a non-living things. The first one is a birds. So, birds are a living beings or a non-living things? Yes, birds are a living beings. So, here we have to write a birds. Next one, balloon. Is it a living being or non-living thing? Yes, balloon is a non-living thing. Okay, next one, stone. Stone is a non-living thing. Mango tree. Mango tree is a living being. Next, pen. Pen is a non-living thing. Isn't it? Now, we have classified the things into a living beings and a non-living things. How we have classified them? On what basis we have classified living things and non-living things? For example, birds. How can we say that the birds are a living and a non-living things? So, we are having a, some characteristics. Based on those characteristics, we can easily recognize the, the given thing is a, whether it is a living being or a non-living thing. So, here are the characteristics of a living beings. So, first one, living beings are made up of cells. Second one, living beings respire. Next, living beings eat food. Living beings grow. Living beings move. Living beings excrete. Living beings reproduce. Living, living things respond to stimulus. Living beings have Lifespan. These are the some characteristics of the living beings. So, we will discuss one by one. First one is the living beings are made up of cells. So, children, you must have observed how house is being constructed. What are the materials needed to construct a house? Such as bricks, cement, water, steel, wood, etc. So, similarly, the body of a living beings, okay, the body of the living beings is made up of a cells. Here I will show you the picture of cells. We find uh, two types of cells. The first one is a plant cell and the second one is the animal cell. Plant cells means the, all the plants are made up of a such kind of cells whereas all the animals are made up of a, these type of cells. But all the living beings, whether it is a plant or animals, they both are made up of uh, cells. Understood children? Second one is living beings respire. During respiration, all the living beings, they intake oxygen and they give out carbon dioxide. We human are having a special part in our body through which we respire. That is a nose. We are having a nose through which we inhale and exhale. And there is one special organs we are having in our body. All the animals they are having a special organs in their body to respire. That is a here lungs. So lungs are the special organs in animals to respire. Now Plants are also living beings. Then how they respire? Because they do not have a nose like us. Then how they respire? So they are having a small openings on their leaves. So 
those openings are called a stomata okay see here here you can see here these are the stomata so the plant respire through the small openings which are present on the leaves those are called a stomata understood children the third one is a living beings eat food so all the living beings need food why do we need food we need food to get energy and to do the work see we human beings or any other animals like tiger lion how do we eat how do we eat we depends on the plants feed the plant products like fruits vegetables or else eggs and all isn't it so but what about the plants how they eat the food are they go for the search of food are they eat the fruits like us are they eat the vegetables like us then what about the plants how they get their food so the the plants they prepare their own food okay the plants prepare their own food so the plants are called a autotrophs understood what are autotrophs the plants prepare their own food so the plants are called a autotrophs so how the plants are uh, prepare their food so they prepare their food there is a one process name photosynthesis so what is photosynthesis plants use solar energy from the sunlight and carbon dioxide here you can see carbon dioxide from the air and they absorb the water minerals salt from the soil through the roots and they prepare the food with the help of chlorophyll here they prepare the food in the leaves here you can see the green one structures these are called as leaves as you know that isn't it so the chlorophylls are present in the leaf the chlorophyll is nothing but it is a kind of pigment which gives a green color to the plants okay why the plants leaves look like green because in the presence of the chlorophyll okay so this process is called a photosynthesis what is photosynthesis plants use solar energy carbon dioxide in air and absorbs water minerals and salts from the soil through the roots and prepare the food with the help of the chlorophyll in the leaf so this process is called a photosynthesis understood children what is photosynthesis how plants prepare their food the product they gives after the photosynthesis is a glucose and the oxygen which we inhale and glucose it is in the form of food understood there are some other plants which we call insectivorous plants so these are the few plants which depends on the insects okay they depends on the insects for their food okay so these are called a uh, insectivorous plants insectivorous plants depends on the insects for their food for example drosera nepenthes here is a picture of a uh, nepenthes this is how it looks like this plant see whenever the insects come and sit on this uh, plant the can you see this one structures lid like structure it will get closed automatically and whatever the insects will sit it will goes inside it understood this is the dros uh, sorry nepenthes see this one is a one more insectivorous plant name drosera can you see this is one insect how the insect has been trapped in his uh, uh, structure can you see this one so this is the drosera plant next is food of animals food of animals the animals do not prepare their own food as we know that can we prepare our own food like uh, plants no we do not prepare our own food either we depends on the other plants or else on the some other animals for our food isn't it that's why the animals are called the heterotrophs understood next all the animals do not eat the same type of food isn't it so based on the food they eat the animals have been classified into three types the first one is herbivores carnivores and omnivores what are herbivores 
herbivores means the animals that eat only plants they eat only plants and plant products so these animals are called uh, herbivores for example cow sheep goat rabbit etc next one carnivores carnivores means animals that eat only other animals they eat only other animals so those animals are called uh, carnivores animals it may be a flesh meat isn't it for example lion tiger cheetah next one is a uh, omnivores omnivores means the animals that eat both they eat both plants as well as animals okay so omnivores they eat both plants as well as animals so so those animals are called a uh, omnivores for example rat pigs even we human beings we also comes under the omnivores understood here you can see herbivores carnivores omnivores carnivores lion tiger cheetah herbivores elephant rabbit horse goat sheep here omnivores you can see rat pig even we human beings isn't it understood children so today we have learnt about the living beings and non living things how can we classify the things into a living beings and non living things based on their different characteristics so we have studied today uh, living beings are made up of cells living beings respire living beings eat food isn't it so what is photosynthesis insectivorous plants autotrophs heterotrophs and based on the food habits how the animals have been classified so we'll continue the next characteristics into the next class